It's time for Reflections with Pastor Drayton. Welcome once again. That's right, it's time for Reflections. And I hope that you will listen right through this 15-minute broadcast. And it will be an inspiration and a blessing and an encouragement to you as you listen to the Word of God today and the few thoughts that I will bring to you uh, for your attention, for your consideration, and for your action. Some of you didn't get it last week, but I trust you will get it this week as I give you another vaccination of faith, something that will fight fear, something that will fight the negatives in you, something that will cause you to rise above and go beyond what the average man on the street may consider or think about or even hold on to. But as children of God, we have something that we can hold on to that is strong, that is reliable, that is absolutely wonderful. And I trust that all of us in our attention, in our hearts, our eyes will be turned toward the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our only true source. There is no man on this earth. There is no woman on this earth there is no prophet apostle or pastor who is to be our source we must always look to god almighty because he is our source as i said to you before in the attributes of god he is never under he is always above he is not subject to circumstance he does not get up one day and not feel well that happens to me uh, he doesn't get up one day and feel like, you know, I just don't feel like getting out of bed today. It never happens to God. You know what? We as children of God are, are to be like him. We are to be above. We are to be up. We are to be over, uh, not under or behind. And yes, sometimes we get under the weather, but that's not what I'm talking about. Our attitude must always be positive, must always be believing God for the best, always believing that somehow, some way. God is going to come to the, for us in ways that, that sometimes we don't even believe. I have been in situations where the power of God has come through in ways that, that only God's power could come through in. And I've seen the miracle power of God at work in my own life. And so when I present this to you today, it is not presented just from a book or presented just from the Bible, but it's being presented from my own experience. Uh, even though the circumstances under which you may receive a miracle from God may be different, at the end of the day, the result is the same. God came through for us. God blessed us. God helped us out of a situation that no man and ourselves could not help ourselves out of. So I want to, to come back again and send and give you another uh, vaccination. Uh, some of you didn't catch it last week, but I want to hit it again this week and trust that you'll be able to get your breakthrough from the Lord and that God will just do something awesome and mighty for you. Please remember as I begin this message that your motives should always be in the right place. Uh, if you are asking God for things but you're asking them uh, to, to use selfishly on yourself or to make yourself look good or to build yourself up, that is, that is a wrong motive and God will not honor that. But when you come to God in humility and you come to God in faith and you say, God, I need something from you. I need a miracle from you. I need a touch from you. I need you to come through for me. Then God will pay attention to what you have to say. Last week I shared about the woman with the issue of blood and how she snuck up behind Jesus and took a miracle from him. Uh, going a little different angle, but the same, same result again today. Um, we want to look into, let me see, Hebrews chapter 11. I've been talking a lot about Hebrews 11 of late. Hebrews 11, verse just 11 and 12 from the Amplified Bible today. It said, because of faith, also Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child, even when she was long past the age for it, because she considered God, who had given her the promise to be reliable and trustworthy and true to his word. And so from one man, though he was physically as good as dead, there have sprung descendants whose number is as the stars of heaven and as countless as the innumerable sands on the seashore. Two short verses, but with a mountain of information for you and I as God's children to hold on to. Sarah according to my understanding, 
was 90 years old, had not had a child. So she was past childbearing age. Again, from my understanding, Abraham had also past childbearing age. He was 100 years old. So both of them were past childbearing age. And Sarah received a promise from God that he would give her a son, a special son. Now, what, what I, I have to bring to your attention is the latter part of verse 11, first of all, and then go back to the beginning. Um, Sarah considered God, who had given her this promise of a son, to be, according to the Amplified Bible, reliable and trustworthy and true to his word. God is reliable and trustworthy and true to his word. Now, what I just said to you is true. Uh, as I dealt with the attributes of God, I dealt with these realities that God is faithful. All right. He's trustworthy. He is true. Uh, he is righteous. Uh, all these are his characteristics. So to say that God is uh, reliable and trustworthy and true to his word um, forgive me for putting it this way, but those are only words. You know, I, I can read words from, from the page of a book. I can read words from the pages of the Bible. But until those words take root in our hearts, until they become reality in our experience, they are just words. So for Sarah to say that God is reliable and trustworthy, it had somehow gotten into her system that the God that she served was reliable and trustworthy. A lot of times in, in Christendom, Christians spout words that we hear preached or we read in the Bible or that people say to us, and we just kind of, by rote, just repeat those words. We may even repeat them with zeal, and with conviction, maybe. But if those words have not really gotten hold of our heart, that they have become more than just words or sayings or popularisms, when they become my reality, I know, I know. My daughter was preparing to, to head back up to uh, the UK where she's studying to be an osteopath and everything was going wrong. Everything was going wrong. She had stayed in Barbados and did online courses for the second term of her third year and now she's going back up for the third term. And as she was preparing to go, everything, flights being canceled, uh, she was trying to find accommodation and the, the person she was talking with at first said, no, we don't take students, we only take business professionals and then the the lady said okay yeah we will consider taking you but then was taking long to to respond and she said okay we will take you but then taking long to send the, the contract she said i'll send it the next day then it doesn't come through and, and everything was just going wrong she got there she had a quarantine and she was waiting for her test to be sent to her the test was late then the next thing is the, the company said, yes, we delivered it. Nothing was delivered. I mean, everything started going wrong. And I, I, I have it on my phone where I, I wrote a little note to her and said, God is going to work everything out. And, and I'll be honest with you. When God worked it out, he worked it out better than I expected. God worked everything out for her blessing, for her good, and for his glory, which is what I'm sharing with you today. So when, when God finally came through, we, we just say, God, well, you are something else. But there was this germ, this little seed of faith that came before this happened to say, look, don't worry. Everything seems to be going wrong, but God is going to work everything out. And indeed, he did. So when, when I tell you that God is reliable and trustworthy, those are not just words. Those are not just words on a page. Those are my experience. And those certainly were Sarah's experience. She said God is true to his word. If God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. If God promises he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And you and I know that we have just so many promises in the word of God. And as I said in the beginning, which was not planned, 
But as I said in the beginning, we have to, you know, trust the sovereignty of God that it is it is for you, one, and it is his time for it to happen. Because sometimes we don't want to have a, a premature miracle. That may sound strange, but think about it. It makes sense. In other words, the miracle must come in the time that it needs to come. All right? Very often God is teaching us things. He's putting us through things. He's showing us things. And he can't come through until we've learned the lessons, that we get our attitude in the right place, that we deal with certain sins in our lives or whatever the case might be. So God was true to his word. But then i got to share this, this second verse with you. So from one man, though he was physically as good as dead, Abraham was 100 years old, there have sprung descendants whose number as, uh, is as the stars of heaven and as countless and as innumerable sands of the seashore. Do you realize that God took a man who was past child-rearing age, put him with a woman who was past child-bearing age, and out of them, a totally, completely, 100% impossible situation. God not only brought forth a son, but he brought forth descendants who have become literally as the stars of the heaven, can't count them as innumerable as the sands of the seashore. That is the God that we serve. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. We can let our minds go to the to the nth degree that our minds will allow us to go. And God says, and I can do more than this. I can do more than this. And this is the God that we're talking about today. And I, I, I want to just just inject in you a little bit of life, a little bit of faith to say, okay, God, look, look, I, I need a miracle. I heard last week's message, I didn't quite get it. But, but today, Lord, let that faith rise up within me. Let that faith spring up within me like a, like a fountain that I can go to you and receive that miracle that I need. You, you may be in a, in a lesser category today, meaning that your situation may not be as severe as this, but I'm talking on, on the level of miracles, something that only God can do. But if, if you are not at that level or you are not in that type of situation, you can go to God for yourself and say, God, I need, I need you to you know, minister here, minister there, help there, do this, do that. I need you to help me with this situation. But I am really addressing those who need a miracle from God today. He is able to give you a miracle. He wants to give you a miracle. As I said, make sure it is his time and it is his will for you at this point in time to give you that miracle. But just reach out and say, God, I, I need you. Listen, it, it is such a, it's such a, you, you, yeah, some of you will know, but, but I know it is such a comfort to be able to come to God and, and to know that, that I or you can come to God by ourselves alone my wife and i need to come to god and say god here is our situation we need you to break through we need you to come through we need you to to show up on the scene we know that you're here because you live inside of us but that's not what we're talking about this situation needs divine attention it needs divine movement and and we need you to to move on that situation and just come through and grant a miracle for us so I want to pray again, again for you today in the last minute that I have, that God will grant you the strength, grant you the courage, grant you the faith like Sarah to be able to stand on God's word for herself, that God is faithful and trustworthy and true to his word. And she stood on that promise for herself and God did a mighty mighty generational miracle in her life and through her life. Father, I pray for all those viewing this broadcast today, Lord, that you will grant them an injection of faith. Faith not in Pastor D, but faith in you to work miracles on their behalf, to just come through where no man has been able to come through. Lord, remind them of your faithfulness. Remind them that you are trustworthy. Remind them that you are true to your word, O oh God, and that they may, may, may step out of their fear and their doubt and their worry and just say, God, I believe you today. I believe you today to grant me a miracle. So I am asking you, to strengthen their faith and allow them to look to you 
and believe you and receive that miracle that only you can give. This is my prayer on behalf of those who watch this broadcast. When the time is right, when the season is right, come through for them that they may know you in a different way than they've ever known you because of your miraculous working power. Lord, I give you thanks and I give you praise in the most holy name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you.